Phoenix Trade is the fastest DAX on Solana. And in my opinion, this has the potential to become the biggest DAX in the entirety of crypto. I'm calling this nice and early, and hopefully this tutorial helps you. So just starting here, this is their Twitter here, at Phoenix Trade. They've just gone and done just over $5 billion worth of all time trading volume, which is quite insane. And I've been explained in depth about this from Zero X Nalik. Now this genius is uh, the guy behind validator.com in terms of the technical aspects running the validator. Great dude and uh, just a really knowledgeable person does market making and stuff like this. this is also on the Jito Council. So um, a really, really epic dude. Give him a follow. It's not that he's necessarily gonna have any alpha here, but maybe he does in the future. It's more the fact that he's a big brain individual on more of the dev side. I also chatted with Val from their team. So I've done a decent amount of research into Phoenix. So let's just dive in and learn the platform. So here is the website, phoenix.trade. Very, very simple. Start trading, of course. And there are limited markets on the UI. We have Sol, USDC, USDT, Wrapped ETH, USDC, Pith, Jito, Bonk, Bonk, EuroC. So this is the Euro stablecoin from Circle and Jito Sol and Sol. These are all the listed pairs. Now there are other pools in the back end. It's a permissionless system. So you could spin up something else such as a meme coin pool and use this infrastructure. You'd have to do that by understanding the command line interface, which I don't, so I'm not gonna show you that. And it wouldn't show on the UI. Just these ones here with deep liquidity, uh, the ones that are shown at the moment. Now this is V1, so version one at the moment. Version two is coming. The details for that are scarce. My prediction would be some sort of perps kind of exchange. And I, as I said, I think this has a huge amount of potential. So I wouldn't be surprised to see V2 take on a huge amount of liquidity because it's just a better form of market making for market makers. Before we go any further, let me just show you this tweet here. So let's talk about TVL. It's overused and a flawed metric. It matters, but for a lot of applications, capital efficiency is actually the key metric. Look at how much more capital efficient Phoenix Trade is than any other DEX. So this is, I believe, a snapshot from DeFi Llama. I couldn't find it exactly in present time, but this is only a couple of days old. You can see Uniswap here, huge amount of TVL, and the volume divided by the TVL shows a low capital efficiency. And then you've got Phoenix down here and the volume $68 million in 24 hours, nothing compared to Uniswap, of course, but no one really knows about Phoenix yet. But the volume in seven days is still very, very good. And the actual DEX TVL is very, very low. So this has very good market efficiency. You can find out more information, of course, on DeFi Llama. I've done a video on how to use DeFi Llama, but all I'm really looking at here is, I mean, one, we need a certain amount of TVL, right? So TVL does have to grow and it has been growing, which is good. But we also want to see other things such as token inflows. And, you know, back middle last year, it was very much a, a bear market. And now we're seeing this nice kind of token inflow happening. So there's a couple of reasons why I want to show you all about how to use Phoenix. One of them is I think it is very good for limit orders. And in particular, if you think the price is going to go down or if you've got some extra USDC and you want to secure some more soul, it's the best place, in my opinion, to go and put a trade at a lower amount as opposed to using Binance or OKX or whatever your centralized exchange is um, because you can do it on Jupe, but Jupe has higher fees. And I've heard that sometimes the orders don't get filled. Now you may have heard of Serum, which was replaced by OpenBook, essentially. Serum was very, very heavily linked to FTX and had bad tokenomics for the actual token. And then OpenBook was kind of a fork of Serum and it was an on-chain limit order book. Phoenix is better than OpenBook. It's too technical for me just to quickly say it, but essentially it's easier to use and because it's easier to use, more people will use it and it will cost you less in order to get you know, your orders filled. And it does a decent amount of volume. As far as I'm aware, it can hold up very, very nicely. Now we need to see maybe a crazy wick down 20% to see how this actually does do, but I am pretty confident that it is good. So let's just start with a few basic things, of course. I'm gonna go and connect my wallet here. As I always mention, you have different wallets for different things. So I'm gonna use a tutorial wallet here, Phantom, and I've connected. I've already used this wallet before, so I'm good to go. Now, when it comes to our trades, once we've made a trade, it will show here under My Trades, and it will show there for seven days. 
and then we have our balances like this. All good. So let's just dive in and do a trade. All right, if I want a bit of Euro C, so at the moment I only have some USDC, I've got no Euro C. So let's go ahead and buy maybe just a small amount, like 10. If you notice the site not loading, just do a refresh and the order book should come up. I'm guessing they're just getting a lot of people come through and uh, some things are not working. If you don't see the order book instantly, just do a refresh on the page and then it should appear. Team is aware, these small little things, they just need to be fixed as they come up. So now I can do a limit order. So if I do a limit order, I can you know name my price of course. So these are the sells and these are the buy orders. Now I can do a limit order and it's just gonna put it in at this price. I'll just do $10, place a limit order. And what we're gonna see here is amount of USDC actually leaving my wallet and this amount of Solana 0.0079. So that's the amount of Solana that it is used in the program to one, create a new token account if we don't already have Euro C and two, there's a little bit which is referred to a seat. So if we have a look here in their docs, not to get too technical, but we essentially have what's called a seat and we need a seat in order to do a limit order. Now regarding this on-chain transaction, I just wanna let you know what it's all about. So there's a single token account, this is normal. This is what's required whenever you don't have that token, that's rent. And the seat is essentially what they use to allow you to do a limit order, what's required on the blockchain. And there's something called a bounty. And the bounty is essentially, it prevents a rent stealing exploit. The bounty is reclaimable. Now I don't know much about rent stealing exploits, but I do know of one smart dev in the past that was able to close rent accounts because, well, it didn't have a bounty on it. So however it works, I'm not sure, but I know the guy was very smart and was able to do it. You can't do it with this one. So right now there is no way to claim back this bounty or to close this seat. However, the bounty is claimable Right now it's only you know a very small amount of soul, but of course it might be worth $2 in the future. They may have 40 pairs and you may wanna claim those back in the future. So I'm sure they'll add it in the future. But nevertheless, that is what it looks like when we create this first order. Now, if we do a market order and we don't have the token, then we don't have to pay that seat. All we're doing is we're just gonna basically be paying for that small amount of Euro C. So that 0.002 soul which we can't see here because I already have paid that rent, but there's no extra charge. I can show you that again though with a different token. So let's have a look. Now I will show you with JTO what it looks like if I go and buy say $10 worth, place a market order. Because I don't have the JTO token, there's that fee again, but we're not creating a seat because there is no limit order. I don't need any JTO in this wallet, so I'll cancel that and we'll go back to our Euro C and USDC. And here we can see we have this open order. And here we can see we've got a buy order here. If we come up to the settings panel, this is where we can turn on dark mode or light mode and set our priority fee. I'm going with fast. If you're gonna be trading a decent amount, you may go with very fast. Slippage is as per normal. And show open orders on chart. You can set it to off, but I think on is good because then you can just see it here. You can see where you've set it. You can cancel the order if you want to. We can see this is the order here, yet the actual first sell order is here. So this is these are all the buy orders and these are all the sell orders. So we can cancel it here, but we can see it. As soon as it gets filled, it will no longer be there. So at the moment, my open trades, we can click cancel to cancel it, and it will be an on-chain transaction, and we'll confirm it like that. So that's how you do an open order. Now, of course, we can do another market order, but we just did that. So let's go and do some more trades with, say, Pith. I need some Pith for my next tutorial. So we can see I've already done a trade here. I've got 50 in my wallet and 1,249 withdrawable. I've got no open orders, but for the sake of it, let's go and do, um, at this price here, $10 worth, place a limit order, and confirm. We can now see it just here, and we can see on the order book, we can see I have a little dot here. So if this moves in the direction that I'm after, then this will of course sell like it just did. It changed from my open orders to my balances and we'll see it also in my trades. So I'll just do a quick refresh on my page. And there we are, there was a small delay there, but we can see everything here. We've got the, the taker and the maker and the transaction ID. Now, a big reason why you may wanna use this here is because the fees are a lot lower. 
So if you're the taker, 0.05% on some markets and 0% for maker orders. And as you can see, the order book has stopped loading. I'll just refresh the page here again. There we are, we're good to go. If we change to another market, such as Seoul and USDC, then it's a little bit different. It's 0.02. Now just quickly heading across to Jupe. I love Jupe. I have been covering Jupe early on, probably the earliest, and I do like it. However, the platform fee is higher, which is understandable, but it's higher. If I want to change this to USDC, it's still a little bit higher. Okay, I want to sell USDC, and if I connect my wallet, and then maybe I want to do like $10, and I maybe buy it at 50, like setting a low limit order. I can place this limit order, all very simple, easy to use, and there is, you know, the small platform fee, which is good, completely fine. But the issue is, and I haven't experienced it myself, but I have seen it being mentioned, is sometimes when things go down, because it's a almost like an aggregator of everything, it's using all these different sources, sometimes the orders don't fill. Whereas if you're over on Phoenix, you can go and you can see one, the order books, you can go and set your prices, and if it dips down there, then they will fill as long as there is the liquidity in the market. Now, one thing that you may want to do is go and set some low bids for Sol or any tokens that you really like. Really low bids that you don't even think would necessarily hit because they could actually hit. Recently, this guy here, Dante, he had some Sol that was basically bought at 14 cents. So he made a massive return in the craziness of that whiff meme coin token that someone tried to market by like $8 million worth and it ended up just going crazy. He managed to get some soul at 14 and a half cents. That was in the middle of when someone tried to market by $8 million worth of whiff token and the slippage was crazy and somehow liquidity pools, it, it just didn't work out. He had a tweet, he's now deleted it, so I can't show it to you. But essentially a little bit of alpha is to set these small little orders. Also setting it in USDT and Tether is not a bad idea as a lot of the on-chain liquidity all runs through USDC. So you may get, you know, a little bit of a, a win with USDT. I'll show you that though with USDC. So we can see these order books. These are basically where people want to sell and you can see the price, the amount of sold, and therefore the amount of USDC. Now, these are all high amounts and things you may want to do just for the sake of it because Maybe one day you go on holidays and there's a crazy wick up and price just goes crazy. But right now at this stage, what I would probably suggest is coming down and setting something quite low. One thing that we can see is there's a huge amount of liquidity down at $89. So you could essentially say it's $150,000 worth of USDC buy orders and it keeps on moving so I can't show it to you perfectly, but there it is there. So if you wanted to try and set a buy order, when you see this, and this could be different on this exchange compared to another exchange, but generally you would notice that these would be fairly similar. What you can basically do is you can maybe set it just above that. So if it's gonna come down to $89.64, I'm just gonna find it again, sorry, and click on it, and that way we can just see it there, or $89.70. What you may wanna do is go, okay, well, I wanna do $90. And I wanna do $20 worth, place a limit order, because if it dips down, you know that you'll be filled first because you're closer. However, if you did wanna put it at this price here, but just be aware those people that put in those bids before you, they will have their orders filled because they were earlier. That's why you may wanna go a little bit higher. But then as I mentioned, maybe you wanna put in a couple of small bids at, I don't know, $18, $5, $10, $100, $1,000. We'll confirm here. And then what we're gonna see is we'll see an open order. We'll do it a little bit lower as well. I have no intention of thinking that it's gonna actually come this low, but I'm just putting them here in case we get lucky. You could even put it down as like $1. You could even do this. Don't think it's gonna be filled, but you can always cancel the order later. At least you've now got some really crazy low open orders. They're all here and we can cancel them in the future. We can't see the buy orders, of course, unless we zoom all the way out and then we can see them all the way down like this. So now let's do a sell order. Maybe we wanna do a sell order and we're gonna sell this at 
250, we'll just do half a sole and we'll place this limit order and confirm. So now we've got the sell order all the way up the top here, which maybe it hits that in the next few months. Maybe it takes a year. I don't know, but at least we've got this little order here. But if we zoom all the way up, we'll be able to see the sell order and we can just click on it if we want to cancel it. Of course, we can just cancel it here. Another thing that we can do is we can just click on an order and then it will just auto fill everything. So let's do another small thing here to sell at this price. I definitely think it's gonna get there in the future, but I think it will take a serious amount of extra effort before it gets there. Now, when you actually do a limit order, I'm gonna do a limit order, another one here. When you do a limit order, you have to withdraw the SOL or the USDC once it is filled or whatever other token, JTO, PITH, etc. So we've successfully put in this little wee order. We'll wait a second and see if it gets filled. Okay, it just got filled. So it will show up here very shortly. It probably won't be on my trade quite so soon, but it shouldn't take too long before it is. There it is. And then if we go to my balances, we can see we've got this red little dot, which means we have to withdraw the funds. So I've got this amount withdrawable. Now I have to withdraw this if I'm then to deploy it into another market. It's 0.055. I can of course just go to sell though and go 0.05 and then place limit order. And because I already have this amount still in my wallet, I could confirm this and then I don't have to deposit anymore because I already have this sitting in my wallet, but it still is an on-chain transaction. So we can see it here, but I'll just go ahead and cancel the order and confirm. Okay, so I'm gonna go up a little bit higher because these are moving very fast so that I can actually just show you what it looks like. Confirm. So here we have our sell order. It's here. Hopefully these will merge and then we'll get our USDC and I'll show you withdrawing that USDC directly. So I've done another bid at 0.005 sell at a lower amount because my other one is not touching and I just want to show you how you can withdraw the USDC. So here it is. I just needed it to fill and finally it has filled. So now we've got this USDC and we can just click withdraw funds and this will withdraw it back to our phantom wallet. This is one of the major points that people didn't understand. You have to withdraw it back to your wallet. Also with your trades, it only shows you everything for seven days. So if for some reason you need to keep a better log, then you need to record it yourself. Ultimately, probably the better thing to do is just to use a dedicated wallet address for all of your Phoenix trades, and that way you can just check them all on chain. And of course, with my open orders, you can go and cancel them all or cancel them individually if you want to. As an example, I might wanna cancel this one and I'll get five USDC back and then the order will be canceled. Now the charting that they use here is just TradingView, but it's just meant to be simple. If you want, you can run some indicators, but there's no rule of function or anything like that. But you've got some basic settings here as well. We'll quickly go down to PIF and USDC. And as a reminder, we can see we've got a balance here and this is all withdrawable. So I can withdraw the funds like this and then confirm. If Phoenix is a great DAP. I do encourage you to use it. If you've done some buys or sells via Drift or via Jupe, it's likely being routed through Phoenix at some stage anyway, but go use the DEX yourself. I'll leave you with this. This is what Phoenix looks like today. The total value locked, so the number of bids on chain is essentially 3.5 million. This will 10X, this will be $35 million in my opinion within three months. The volume, it's 112 million in my opinion. This will be $500 million in three months. So that's just some of my predictions. Happy trading on Phoenix. Stay curious and we'll catch you in the next video.